of BioPhoenix here, and welcome back to another episode of Gamers Encyclopedia Phoenix Edition, which is a retrospective series where I outline long-running series of video games. So the first episode I did was on Shin Megami Tensei, and boy was that a long one. Well, thankfully I can tell you this, that this one won't be nearly as long, since the series I'm taking a look at is much shorter and not nearly as confusing. So the one that I'm taking a look at today is EDF, aka Earth Defense Force. So this is a series of third-person shooters that originally started out as a simple series game. Now in case you don't know what the simple series is, well it's perfectly understandable, especially if you're a new fan of the EDF games. But to sum it up simply, yeah no pun intended, the simple series is a series of low budget games that were all published by D3. And they all range from many different genres, and a lot of them have some pretty uh, quirky looks to them. And they made tons of these games, and they were also made to be very affordable. And the EDF games is one of the few series that came out of the simple series Purgatory and actually made a name for itself. But with that said, one thing I do want to cover before we talk about the main games themselves is that I'm going to get over the basics of what you need to know because it is pretty obvious that this series of games is not really known for its story. So it's a third person shooter where you play as a soldier who is a part of the EDF and cities all around the world are being attacked by giant monsters, usually ranging from insects, robots, aliens, and many others. Now it may sound typical at first, but the one thing that does make the series a bit more interesting was its charm. Because you can tell that this series was very inspired by the monster movies from the 1950s. Probably the most accurate would be movies directed by Ed Wood. And thinking about it now, it's kind of ironic that I'm comparing a game company that put out low budget games with a, a director that put out low budget movies. But with that said, that's the basic of what you need to know, so now let's start talking about the games. So the very first game is Simple Series Volume 31, The Earth Defense Force, while in the PAL region it's just called Monster Attack. Yeah, they really called it that. And it was developed by Sandlot and published by D3 in Japan and H-Tech in the PAL region. And it was released in Japan of 2003 and it was released in the PAL region of 2004. And the producers were Nobuyuki Yokojima and Daisei Saito. So as for the game itself, well there's not a lot I can say that already have been said before where you just gotta shoot up a shitload of different enemies like giant ants. But there are a shitload of different weapons you get to unlock and there are three different vehicles that you get to ride. And the game is mission based with only 25 missions throughout the game. But there are five different difficulties like easy, normal, hard, chaos, and inferno. So because this is the first game within the EDF series, this is the one that laid down the basic groundwork. But one thing I have to say right off the bat is that this game does feel kind of dated, at least if you played any of the other ones first. Now, when I mean outdated, I'm not talking about the game's graphics. I'm talking about the amount of content that this game has. Because all the other games within this series have made a lot of big improvements and also have added so much more, so if you played any of the other ones and then go back to this one, it would feel kind of weird. Two good examples that I'll give for more popular games is Assassin's Creed and Dynasty Warriors. So the first Assassin's Creed game and the second Dynasty Warrior games were the games in those series that had that signature style that made them popular. And they added more stuff within each entry, although of course they did experiment a little bit, but that's besides the point. So the point I'm trying to make here is that the first Assassin's Creed and Dynasty Warriors 2 were considered really good games at the time when they came out. Where in this day and age, they're really nothing special, but they are at least very important to their series roots. So anyways, the first Earth Defense Force game is very much like that, and especially the fact that there is an enhanced version that I will talk about a little later. So now let's get moving on to the second entry, so this one in Japan is called Simple Series 2000 Volume 81 The Earth Defense Force 2, and then in the PAL region, it's called Global Defense Force, that's for the PS2 versions. And then there's a PSP version called Earth Defense Force 2 Portable. And then the enhanced version on the Vita is called Earth Defense Force 2 Invaders from Planet Space. So this one was developed by Sandlot and it was published by D3 in Japan, Essential Games in PAL, Xseed in North America, and P-Cube for the PAL version of the Vita game. 
And as for the release dates, it was released in 2005 for Japan and 2007 for the PAL region, and that was for the PS2 versions. And the PSP version was released in 2011 in Japan. And as for the enhanced version on the Vita, it was released in 2014 for Japan, 2015 for North America, and 2016 for the PAL region. And its producer was Nobuyuki Okajima. So the gameplay this time is still the same stuff as you would suspect for a typical sequel, so there's a lot more new weapons and a lot more new missions. And there is a new playable character called the Pale Wing. So this new character has a jetpack and can fly around for a short period of time. I think this was a really nice feature and also does make the gameplay a little bit different because I do find that playing as the Pale Wing kind of makes it feel like playing like an aerial shooter, kind of like Star Fox. But only that you're not on rails, but you get the picture. And the portable version that was only in Japan actually added even more levels and more weapons. And I decided to add in the enhanced version on the Vita in here just to make it all in one. And also because it's actually an enhanced port of the PSP version with one newer thing where it does add another new character. And that one being the Air Raider, which does allow you to use a lot of different bombs and heavy weapons. And they can call in airstrikes, which is always fun. And it's a good thing that they released this one in all regions, since the PSP version of it was only released in Japan. And I'm also glad that they did, because believe it or not, this was actually the very first game in the series that I've ever played. So I'm very happy about that, because I do find this series is pretty damn fun. So yeah, the enhanced Vita version is pretty much the way to go, since it is available in all regions. And it has the most content. Although the PS2 version still isn't a bad way to go because it still has a good amount of content within it, but the only shitty thing is is that it was not released in North America. So now let's get moving on to the next game, and this one's kind of weird where, yes, it is considered as number 3, but it is also a remake of the first game. So in Japan, it's called Earth Defense Force 3, and then worldwide it's known as Earth Defense Force 2017 and it was developed by Sandlot, and it was published by D3 in all regions. And it was released in 2006 for Japan, and 2007 for both North America and Europe. And then later came a portable version that was on the Vita, and that one was released in 2012 in Japan, and 2013 for both North America and Europe, but it was digital only. So the game director this time was Toshio Noguchi, and the director this time was Takahiro Homni. And the online review scores this time were generally mostly positive, but it did have a couple mixed results. So like I said earlier, this game is considered as the third entry, which it is, but it is also a remake of the game Monster Attack. So it has more weapons, more levels, more vehicles, but since this is a remake of the first game, unfortunately there's no other new characters. And as you can tell, this was the very first game to be released in North America. And you're probably wondering why the first two PS2 games were not released in North America originally. Now unfortunately, there's not an exact answer as to why, but I did find something that is a possibility that I have read on. So apparently, from what I've heard, Sony of America were not really 100% comfortable on releasing a game like this where you can blow up buildings. So you gotta remember, this was still in the early 2000s and that one uh, disaster happened, so it is understandable as to why they wouldn't release a game like this. And like I already said, this is not 100% proof, but it is an idea that is very possible. However, I personally think they probably just had a hard time licensing out their games to over here. Because the Simple series was very much a Japan thing, but Europe did get quite a few titles, where over here, we only got like, two. Well, at least as far as I know, so we had the Avengers of Darwin, and then there is Metropolis Mania. But when it came to all the other stuff like Earth Defense Force and Oni Chambara, we didn't get any of those on PS2, we had to wait until the 360. So anyways, EDF 2017 is a very typical remake that is also kinda sorta a sequel. I don't know, it's weird shit, but either way, this one is still pretty good stuff. But before we move on, it is worth noting that in the Vita version, they did add back in the character Pale Wing. So now let's get back on track and talk about the fourth game, which is another one that also did get an enhanced version, which I will include all in here, and that being Earth Defense Force 4, or what it's known as worldwide is Earth Defense Force 2025. 
In the enhanced Redux version is called Earth Defense Force 4.1, The Shadow of New Despair. So it was developed by Sandlot and it was published by D3 for the PS3 and 360 versions. And then Xseed published the PS4 version in North America, while PQ published it in the PAL region. So it was released in 2013 in Japan and 2014 for both North America and Europe. And then the enhanced version came out in 2015 for both Japan and North America, and Europe got it in 2016. And also in 2016 it did get a PC version. And the game director is Toshio Noguchi. And as for the online review scores, this one was also fairly positive. Now obviously nothing that's going to win any awards, but still pretty good enough. Now one thing that is unfortunate to mention is that I have yet to play this one. I know, I'm disinterested myself because I have played many of the other ones, but yet I still never played this one, and I hear this one's actually one of the best. But one thing I can say is that this one does have a very different look to it, especially the classes that you pick. So you have the Ranger, Wing Driver, Air Raider, and Fencer. So it's pretty much the same classes like that I mentioned earlier, but only that this time they just look a lot different. Although the only one that seems to be new here is the Air Raider, which is mostly for support. We're giving out health and summoning vehicles. And as again, there's way more levels, way more weapons, way more different enemies you get to kill. And one thing I do know about this game is that in the co-op, it does have many different missions that are different from the single player missions. So I can only imagine how fun this game would be if you were to play it with co-op. Man, the more I talk about this game, the more I really want to get this one because damn, this one just looks really damn good. But yeah, I'm pretty sure you can ask anyone else who's a fan of the series that has played this one and they'll probably tell you that it's pretty damn awesome. So unfortunately, that's all I have to say because I haven't played this one yet. So now let's get moving on to the latest main entry of the series being Earth Defense Force 5. And this one was developed by Sandlot, published by D3, and it was only released in Japan of December 7th of 2017. Now I have heard that this one is probably going to come out to North America and Europe, it's just the date is not exact yet. So maybe by the time this video is uploaded, we might have a new date, but I don't know yet because I can't read the future here. So that takes care of the main series, but there is a few spin-offs we are going to talk about here. Told you it's a lot shorter than Shin Megami Tensei. So the first spin-off we got is Global Defense Force Tactics. So this one was developed by Think Arts, and it was published by D3 in Japan and Essential Games in the PAL region. And it was released in 2006 for Japan and 2007 for the PAL region. And the only credits I found was the composers, and those were Masafume Takada and Jun Fukuda. Now one thing I did make a small little error on is that I forgot to include the Japanese name on here, which is Simple Series 2000 Volume 103, Earth Defense Force Tactics, but that's pretty self-evident. So just like the title suggests, it's a tactics game. Now I haven't played this one, so I can't really go into detail about what like the mechanics are and such, but what I can say is that it does use uh, hexagons instead of squares like a lot of other uh, tactical RPGs. In fact, the hexagons where you move your units to does kind of remind me of a tactical RPG on the Sega CD called Dark Wizard. So just by looking at this, it does seem like a pretty average tactical RPG. And there's just not a whole lot that I can say, but hopefully it is better than how it looks. So now, onto the next spin-off title. This one I was kind of surprised. I thought it was a part of the main entry series, but it's not. And that happens to be Earth Defense Force Insect Armageddon. So this one was developed by Victa Cycle Software and was published by D3. And it was released in 2011 in all regions, including PC, Xbox 360, and PS3. And as for the online review scores, as again, this one was also going from positive, mostly positive, to uh, mixed. So the main reason, as you can tell why it's a spin-off, is because it was made by a different developer. And they are not a Japanese company. But unfortunately, this is another game in the series that I never played before. But there's two newer game modes that were not in any of the other games that I did found to be kind of interesting. So there's Campaign Remix Mode, which is essentially the campaign mode, but everything is all randomized. And then there's Survival Mode, which is pretty self-explanatory, just trying to survive as much as you can with different ways of enemies that do progressively get harder. And yes, you can do this one up to uh, many different players. 
But other than that, I can't say a whole lot, but it does look like a pretty damn good entry for a spin-off game. And as for the next spin-off, we have Earth Defense Force 4.1, Wing Driver the Shooter. So this time around, it was developed by Clouds Inc., published by D3, and it was released in 2017 and only in Japan as of right now, and it's a PS4 digital download. So as again, I haven't played this one since it wasn't even officially released here. But this one seems very arcade style, where you gotta use a wing driver and go through different stages and kill as many enemies as possible. So not a whole lot to say, but it does seem very indie style, which is kinda cool. Now as for the last spin-off, this one is Earth Defense Force Iron Rain. So this one has not really had a whole lot of info out yet, all we know is that it's going to be developed by Yuke, and it is going to come out in Japan this year, but as for the rest of the world, it's still unknown, and it is going to be on PS4. But one thing I have heard that is worth noting is that this one's going to be more serious rather than being like ridiculous and campy. Which is going to be kind of weird, but at the same time, I'm kind of interested to see how they pull it off. So in the meantime, I'll try and get around to playing the other EDF games that I've yet to play. And that's all the games you need to know about the Earth Defense Force games, and my personal favorite would probably have to be the one on the Vita, which is the enhanced version of 2. That one is definitely some great stuff, but I can't wait to play 4.1. But, believe it or not, there is one more game I do want to talk about, and this last game is really not a part of the series at all, but the name is just so similar, I just, I feel like I have to mention it. Also, I don't know when the hell else I'm ever going to talk about this game, I mean, it's not like I'm ever going to do a single review on it, so this game just happens to be Earth Defense Force, or also known as Super Earth Defense Force. And this one was developed and published by Jaleco, and it was released in 1991 in North America in the arcades, and then it was ported to the Super Nintendo in 1991 in Japan and 1992 for both North America and Europe. And then it was available on the Wii's Virtua Console in 2010 for PAL, 2011 for Japan and North America, and then was later available on the Wii U's Virtua Console in 2015 for both North America and Japan. And there was an iOS version released in 2011 for all regions. And the game was produced by Yuki Are. And as for the online review scores, this one is pretty positive, but also did get a few negatives. So this game is a horizontal shoot 'em up that just ever so happens to have the exact same name of a series that I just taken a look at. And yeah, like I already said, I'm really just talking about this one just for shits and giggles because the name is just so damn similar. But if you must know, it is a pretty decent shoot 'em up. It's not the best you'll ever play on Super Nintendo, but it's definitely not the worst. I'd say that it's probably on par with the game Phalanx, you know, the one with the ridiculous cover. But yeah, no giant insects to be found here. So anyways, to be serious though, that's pretty much all of the Earth Defense Force games that have to do with like running around shooting the everlasting fuck out of uh, giant insects and other giant robots and crap. And I have enjoyed all the games that I have played, so I do think it is a series that is worth checking out. And it's also great that this game does have a cult following, where now the games are even more popular than once they ever were. I mean, this was came out of a series that just made a bunch of shitty budget titles. And just for amusement, I like to call it the Shit Pull series, because, you know, a lot of them are shit. But don't get me wrong, there's a couple good ones that came out of it, like this one for an example. Well anyways, that's all I gotta talk about for EDF, and with that being said, thanks for watching, commenting, and have yourselves a great day.